Today I'm going to be talking about the covers for Annals of Botany and rather than a written blog I decided on a new departure of having a video blog. There is though a text version of this which includes many links to extra information. Now each issue of Annals of Botany has two pictures on the cover, one large one which forms the background and a smaller inset image. The inset image, such as the ones that are surrounding me in the virtual studio here, highlight topics of particular interest that are in the current issue. But over the year, we aim that those inset images give a good representation of the diversity of our content, from cell and molecular biology, to roots, leaves, seeds, nutrition and plant stress, through development, physiology and onto ecology, modelling, and other rarer papers such as those on the history of art with plants or those with fossils. Inset examples in the virtual studio here also feature on our Annals of Botany Facebook and Google Plus pages where there's often an extended caption. The background image though is maintained for the whole of the year. Let's look back to the cover picture that we used four years ago. This was the first of my photographs that we used on the cover and it is actually the second choice. It shows a rose from a site of special scientific interest in Cambridgeshire in the east of England called Barnack Hills and Holes. It's an area of grassland on Jurassic limestone, so quite alkaline soils, and it's actually a disused quarry, but disused not from recent years, but from Roman and medieval times when it provided stones, including those used for building Peterborough Cathedral. This has left an area of rolling hummocky soils with several quite rare plants, including no less than eight species of orchids, and those are being studied by another Annals of Botany editor's Mike Fay at Kew. Other notable plants are the parasitic knapweed broom rape, that's Orobankia latia, and actually my first choice for the cover was a rather rare plant, pask flower, Pulsatilla vulgaris from the Ranunculaceae, and sometimes it's classified in the genus Anemone. These pictures were taken at the end of May, rather late in the season. Photographically, though, there are a number of constraints for the main cover image. The resolution and printing screen for a glossy cover printed at something larger than A4 is amazingly high and strains the digital cameras that I have. Unfortunately, your editor neither has the funds to purchase a Nikon D3 or even a rumoured Nikon D4, nor the muscles and baggage capacity to carry it around the world. After the cover picture is made, it's masked out and placed onto a generic green dappled forest floor type of background. Altogether, the resolution requirements and the hairiness of the pask flower meant it was not suitable for the cover, and we changed it to the dog rose, Rosa canina, 